Hello everyone, here's another edition of my review of Pretty Little Liars. This is season 6, um, episode 14, New Guys, New Lies, or as I'm titling this, New Flames, Same Names. <laughs> Meaning they're new relationships, but the same people, they're just, you know, trading off. <laughs> you know, but anyway, that's a little joke. But, um, that's how I'm dealing with the Spencer and Caleb thing, is by joking. Uh, so, previously on Pretty Little Liars, A was really awesome. I mean, you know, we didn't like A, but A did a lot of crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, kind of respectable. Mona was awesome as A, you know. This new A is, you know, we've all seen the episode. If you haven't, you should probably go watch it before you listen to this. But, uh, yeah, um, new A is kind of lame. Uh, the outfit, the costumes, no, not liking it. Um, and the emojis? What's up with that? Like, who does emojis? And as I said, you know, either this means that the new A is definitely not Mona, or I'm only okay with this kind of stuff if it is Mona. Because if it's Mona doing this, then it's kind of like, you know how Mona has that pretend innocent thing going on. So, um, there's, that's where I am with that. And then also previously on <laughs> Lars, we saw that, um, Hannah was kind of having a little bit of trouble dealing with this new relationship between Spencer and Caleb. And, um, she's really sad. And this week we get to see some more sadness from the other, you know, the dude from the Brotherhood of Ex-Boyfriends. And, um, <laughs> so, anyway, um, you all got my opinions on Spaylib already, so I won't go into that. So I'm going to get to watching the episode and, you know, interject with my commentary and things like that so I can't even watch how this starts out because it starts out with Spencer and Caleb you know um, in bed and uh, she gets up and she's goes into the kitchen to make coffee of course because um, she's Spencer and she loves coffee but uh, you know she's just wearing like Caleb's shirt and uh, that's all she's wearing and she finds her phone on the table and um, she doesn't, I figured she might regret this the next day, but she's not, she's pretty happy about it, and, uh, but she finds her phone and sees all the texts that she missed, and Hannah seemed the most urgent to talk to her, so that's interesting. And, of course, that lame emoji from A, <laughs> I'm calling this new person A, I don't, I don't know what we're supposed to call them, but I'm just gonna say A, because that's the easiest. Um, I noticed Hannah's face, um, she definitely looks worried, um, cause Spencer says she was up late working on something, and Hannah makes this face, like, she's wondering and worried if Spencer was actually with Caleb, so that's the first sign of her, like, um, I don't know, being concerned about this. I don't understand why Emily says maybe Sarah can't cut her own meat, but she can still type a text, like, no, I don't think she can. I don't think she can type a text either, Emily. I don't know why she said that, because she can't. I think this is one of the funniest lines in this episode. <laughs> Hannah's like, talking about that coffee, and she's like, You can handle anything your boss throws at you. Pause. Her stapler, her phone. <laughs> she's talking about literal objects. It's just very funny and very Hannah. I just wanted A to be like, when Hannah texted and they responded, like, Yes, you know me. This is all I've ever been waiting for. I'm just a person who loves getting texts back. I get so used to being ignored on my texts. My texts just got ignored too much. That's my motive. I wanted to, you know, make somebody answer me. All these years, all you had to do was respond to my text. And I would have told you who I was. Like, they've never responded to an A text before. Like, they've never even tried this. So it's like, I wanted A to be like, Finally, that's all I ever wanted was a response from one of you <laughs> via text. <laughs> oh yes, and again, I guess last week that um, the shusher would be Hannah. And it's Hannah, and she looks amazing. She looks so amazing doing this. She did a great job. Good job, Ashley Benson. You did fantastic. And, um... Yeah, so next week it's probably going to be Arya because she's the only one left uh, that hasn't done it yet. And, you know, we'll go from there. I wonder if she's going to be revealing something or not, but, you know, she's the only one left. So I figured they'll go with Arya next. Emily is wearing the world's shortest skirt. And, like, she's sitting here and she has the pillow over her legs because she 
basically has to, and she stands up to go watch the TV, and she has to pull her skirt down. Like, I don't know who the new clothing stylist is. I miss Mandy Lund. Like, Mandy Lund is not the stylist anymore. It's like, this new one just put Emily... Like, Shay Mitchell is like, I have to fight with this skirt the entire time I'm shooting because it's the shortest thing. And it's so... Like, Aria's is short, too, but it's just more fitting and comforting. Um, the picture I have here has Byron holding Pigtunia. I'm not sure why. Um, but he was not holding that in the um, actual uh, scene. Or maybe Pigtunia's in his bag. In the picture, it looks like it, but it's, he's not. But the weird thing is, Arya, um, they're talking about her dad hooking up with someone and um, suggesting that he's hooking up with a woman in the hotel. And Arya like, just smiles about it. And I'm like, Arya, what's up with that? Like, I wouldn't, I'm, I would be grossed out. She just smiles like, like, oh, that's cute. That's not cute. I'm sorry. I don't care how old you get. That's still not cute. They spend the whole episode, well, Arya is just like, freaking out the whole entire time about this nine iron but the person who sent them the picture of the nine iron was a so it's like um is that a reliable source how do we know this is the actual murder weapon like a is, might be sending you on a wild goose chase to freak you out like you just believe that picture suddenly I, that doesn't make any sense <laughs> suddenly sabrina's hair is like suspiciously like fixed like allison's was or is usually um the previous times we saw Sabrina, her hair kind of looked hippie-ish. Like, not messy, grungy, but like, like, like cool grungy. But now it's like fixed and, um, just more put together. I don't, I don't know why they did that. Maybe because she's becoming more of a, um, common character. At this point, after Spencer and Caleb have hooked up, every interaction with them makes me uncomfortable still, but like, it seems like they have the chemistry they had as friends now. Like, they don't have that tension anymore. And they just seem like they're friends, like they always did. Except when... And you don't realize they're more than friends until they actually directly, like, say say that. Say it out loud. And, um... Or say stuff about it. So, um... Spencer disgusts me whenever she says... It was... Last night was perfect. But I am kind of impressed because she just has those, um conversations like quickly <laughs> prepared when that guy comes up and she's just, like talking about something completely different and she is obviously not over Toby because she sees you know this Yvonne thing and um it's just awkward for her so she's not you can tell she's not over Toby which and then she says that this the woman running against um, Veronica likes candy corn and Caleb makes the appropriate face of disgust because really I mean what kind of monster likes candy corn candy corn is gross I'm sorry if you like candy corn but it's gross Caleb has the exact right response about that he's still on his game with uh you know uh, judging food and things like that <laughs> Um, my opinion on Yvonne, let's just get to that now, uh, because I'm not going to talk anymore about Spencer and Caleb's relationship, because that just, it hurts me. It makes me nauseous. So, um, Caleb is obviously being a nice guy, though, like, to Spencer, because he is, in a sense, the best boyfriend to whoever he's with, but, I mean, he doesn't really love Spencer, um, but he is good, you know, while he's, they're doing this, he's still going to be, like, the best guy ever, because, you know, that's him. But, um... Yvonne is like the female Jordan, where there's no reason really to dislike her. Um, but then there's something about her that you're just like, you're not supposed to be with this person. You're just, you're just filler for right now. And you're here to make Spencer realize that she still wants to be with Toby. But anyway, um, one thing I will say is peep streaming, her and Toby stream, uh, the Tonight Show and watch it, binge watch that. Who does that? That's good, like really weird. But anyway, and then they laugh, which just a little bit later on. I'm gonna get to this first. Um, Spencer, T T Caleb's like, I'm gonna go see Toby later, and Spencer's just like, Yeah, I'm cool with that. Like, she's obviously not cool with that. And then we see Hannah talking to Jordan, and you can't really understand a word he says, but he says he's gonna land in Brookhaven. Which is crazy, because it's like, throwback to season two. Um, Mona saying, it's in Brookhaven. <laughs> I love that part. 
Um, of unmasked. But anyway, Hannah's talking to her boring boyfriend, and then um, she's explaining why, you know, Emily's like, you, you know, he seems pretty good for you, so why the hesitation? And she's like, and then she basically says that she was, you know, it feels like she's pushing um, Caleb and Spencer together just so she can, like, move on. But, like, it's like, this is a tactic she's trying to see if it'll help her move on. Like, if, if Caleb's with Spencer, then obviously she has to move on. Like, it's like a tactic that she's trying to force herself away from Caleb into Jordan, and it's just... I don't think this is working either, I think it's, but I think it's something that she's trying, so this kind of gives us insight to why she, like, she's not cool with it, but why she's, one of the reasons she's trying to be is because she wants to be as into Jordan as she was Caleb, and, um, I think she thinks that maybe if he's with Spencer that'll help her, um, get over Caleb, but it's not working, I mean, it's obviously not working, and then she says, you know, I, I ever since I've been here, I was, you know, been spinning and twirling, and with Jordan, I don't spin and twirl, and it's like, mm, mm, she's like, he keeps me grounded, and I'm like, grounded or bored? Like, there's a difference between somebody that makes you feel peaceful and somebody that makes you feel nothing. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's people that make you feel comfortable and peaceful, and that's great, but then there's also, is that what it is? Are you just settling and, like, you're, you know, complacent? You know, there's a big difference between content and complacent. Content means you're happy and peaceful. Complacent means, you know, you can't find anything wrong. <laughs> so you're just like, kind of just in limbo with your feelings. And I think, I think Hannah's more being complacent here, you know, with Jordan. Is that the right word? Anyway, you know what I mean. She just, you know, she thinks she's feeling happy and peaceful, but really it's just she's not feeling much of anything. And she thinks because she's not feeling much of anything negative, that it must be positive. <laughs> but it's really just, I feel like it's just boredom. Um, so, yeah. I like Yvonne. I don't really dislike her. Uh, not nearly as much as I dislike Jordan. <laughs> um... But I don't get this because they make a joke and she's like, we, Toby's like, we stream. I'm like, that is the weirdest thing to hear you say. It's almost, it's almost as awkward as hearing Toby say, it's Andrew, babe. But, um, they say they watch, binge watch The Tonight Show and Caleb's like, oh, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. Fallon is hilarious. And then they just look at each other and laugh really hard. I don't get the joke. Yvonne says, you explain it, and I'm like, please, explain it on camera, because I don't, I guess it's something dirty, but it's just not, it's just not hitting the nail on the head here, it's just not getting there for me, it's not funny, and, um, it's not really cute, it kind of grosses me out, Toby should not date anybody but Spencer, I'm not really that, like, you know, uh, upset, you know, about them not being together, because I just feel like, whatever, and plus he's dating some random girl, not, like, Spencer's best friend. But this, uh, you know, Caleb tells Toby he doesn't want to do it. And there's, you know, obviously Caleb is a good friend. He's trying to be, you know, handle this the best way possible. And again, I don't know how they could handle it any better, except <laughs> Spencer told Hannah before they hooked up and was like, you know, I'm going to make sure beforehand. Caleb's like, I'll do it first and then ask my bro for permission. <laughs> Caleb, you're kind of supposed to ask permission first before you do it. But, I mean, he's a dude. And he didn't really expect it. So, you know, it was kind of unexpected, I guess, for him. Um, so, I don't know. I guess we're going to give him that a little. But, um, no one seems to be really mad about this. Toby's not really mad, but he's definitely upset. He's not cool with it. And he's more taking it out on Spencer than he is Caleb. Um, he's he loves Caleb so much, like, and so it's like he's being way cool about it with Caleb or trying to be. And he hugs him, and it's so sad. Like this part made me cry the first time I watched it. And poor Toby, you know, we're getting those empathy feelings that we have for Toby back in like the early seasons, and um, that's what I felt anyway. It's like, oh, poor Toby. We're back to you know, poor Toby. Um, the innocent Boo Radley. Um, Boo Radley's building a house now. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. But anyway, um, you know, he seems to be more lenient with Caleb about it. And then later he kind of takes it out on Spencer a bit. Um, kind of harsh with her, but we'll get to that. So I know some people aren't into Toby. Like, 
attracted to him. But I'm just looking at both of these guys, and they're both, I mean, Toby's had some issues, but I don't know. Both of these guys are just really good catches. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it. I know some people are, like, not into Toby, but um, <laughs> just looking at both these guys, they're so cute, and they're so nice. Um, they're such good guys, really. Um, and I'm just like, wow. I wish real guys could be like Caleb and Toby. <laughs> Even though they've, they're they not perfect, but I mean, nobody is. But I, I'm just like, man. Caleb just reminds me of somebody. I, I don't know. I just, I love Caleb. I, I mean, I don't like what's going on with him and Spencer, but I still love Caleb. And I love Toby. I feel so bad. Like, it almost makes me feel worse because Toby's not being mad about it. And Caleb's not being a jerk to Toby about it. He's not like, hey, I'm hooking up with Spencer. I don't care. Like, Caleb's being so nice and loving to Toby. He's like, look, say the word and it won't happen. Which it already kind of did. But, I mean, you know. But he's to giving Toby the option to tell him no. And um, he's being a good bro. And Toby's trying to be a good bro. And it's just like, you guys. Like, uh, like Hannah being cool, trying to be cool with it and being loving about it. Like, their reactions, like, and their interactions with each other as friends, like, it shows how much they truly love each other as friends, like, Spencer and Hannah and Caleb and Toby. They're true bros, you know, they're truly friends deep inside. And, um, I love that they have this bromance. I loved when it started, like, when it first started, I was so excited. And I love that they come this far to where they're actually, like, best friends. <sighs> That's so exciting when I really think about it, but it also kind of makes it sadder. Like, not just that they're so close, but the way they're lovingly handling it on all sides. They're trying to be loving with everyone about it. And that makes it sadder somehow. Like, if they were being, like, jerks or, like, flippant, like, I don't care. I'm going to get it on with your ex-boyfriend, you know, or your ex-girlfriend. Like, it would be, you know, what you would expect from most television shows. And that's another thing I respect about the show. They are doing this thing to where no other show would handle this this way. Props to them for that. They would not handle it this way. They would get in a fight. It would be dramatic. They're putting true friends' love over drama. And this is kind of unnecessary drama for them to even be together. But since they're doing it, um, so much respect for that. That they're, um, m you know, keeping them with loving their friends and, like, doing it, respecting each other as people. And it's just like, Wow. You know, if this does happen in real life, people should handle it, you know, kind of this way. So, I mean, I have to say I'm impressed with that. I don't think, most shows wouldn't do this. Like, they would have the punch the dude in the face or get mad or say the dramatic, like, you know, I thought you were my friend. You know, I could hear that on like a, um, you know, a more immature show, a more um, show that didn't care as much about what happens to the characters. So I have to say that's... You know, I'm I'm still like working this out for myself too, but I'm seeing this and I'm I'm really, you know, that's really a good thing for them to do. But it does make it sadder that they're being so loving because it's like these are really good, honest people that, you know, truly love their friends. Spencer and Caleb both and Toby and Hannah both, you know. They're all trying to do the right thing, the rightest thing they can given the situation. And it almost makes you sadder because it's like they don't want to hurt them, you know, and it's just like, it's not like regular TV. It's truly not. Um, like I said, normally there would be like a punch out fight with the bros and the girls would be like catty. But, uh, wow. I'm almost glad they did this just for like this reason, like, that they showed this can even happen and they're still good friends. <laughs> like, they're still good to their friends. So, maybe that was the point, you know, which I don't think Caleb or Spencer would do this. I mean, staying true to character, but, like, you know, maybe they wanted to go here. Maybe they wanted to show that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I, I can't see this situation happening on another show the way it has. And them making the characters respond the way they have. And that's amazing. I mean, props for that, definitely. The main problem I still have with Caleb and Spencer doing this is that, you know, they had such a good friendship, detective chemistry with each other. 
Toby's cute as a button. I don't care what anybody says. But anyway, they have such a good friend chemistry that, like, I don't think this is going to last between them because they're already kind of like, I'll get to this, they're, you know, kind of getting sick of each other already, but, and they're not real sure about it. But anyway, later, when they want to be friends again, um, and they stop their romance and start being actual just friends, I don't know if we'll be able to feel comfortable with them being together the way we were before. Um you know, we might always be nervous that they're gonna, like, go back to that place, so I don't, I don't know. We'll get to that when we get to it, I guess. I saw a lot of people be, I saw a lot of people be mad at Arya for putting Emily in this bad situation, and Emily's trying to be cool, and I get it, like, it's not exactly the right thing to do, but Arya's pretty much, tr like, going off the deep end. She said she's at level two, Emily doesn't want to see level three, and Arya's kind of a nutcase. I mean, I don't want to say that flippantly, like, but Arya's not mentally, like, stable, like, she's kind of, you know, she's not all, she's not stable, really, and especially this stuff happening um, to her right now with her dad or Ezra. First she thinks it's Ezra, then she thinks it's her dad, and she's basically not in a good mental place right now, so she's not, you know. And then this point where she's freaking out, um, they're in Lucas's loft, I guess this is their meeting place now, <laughs> they're just taking over. Um, so she's freaking out and then she just like starts talking to herself. It's like, Arya, breathe, Arya, breathe, telling herself. And this is the first of two times that we'll see a liar talk to themselves in this episode, which I think is fantastic. Like, it's really interesting. I really like it just because it's it's realistic and it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like, oh man. Like, I don't know, there's something about it that I love. Um, but no, I'm not really mad at Arya for this. She's just kind of doesn't, she's just not. Um, making rational decisions. She's just not um, thinking in that rational plane right now. She's not on a rational thinking plane right now. She's kind of um, freaking out <laughs> uh, is the maybe the professional word. The official. Uh, what would you call it? I don't know. <laughs> the technical term for it uh, is freaking out. <laughs> she's just freaking out and uh, uh oh yeah I've been calling her Aria I forgot I'm gonna start calling Aria Munchkin Cat because you know they had the Munchkin Cats on a few episodes ago and they're, they have short legs and they're adorable and guess what tiny little Aria has short legs as Mona said in season 2 and she's adorable so Munchkin Cat it is so Munchkin Cat <laughs> Tells Emily to go, you know, distract Sabrina so she can get the key to Ezra's apartment. And then she walks in Ezra's apartment and t typical Arya, uh, munchkin cat, <laughs> typical munchkin cat, goes in and is like, Ezra, Ezra, and it just reminds you of, like, the old days when he she would go in his apartment. And then she goes and finds his golf clubs and has to touch every single one for some reason to count them. Then she finds the messages and I'm, I'm surprised she didn't, like, you know, a girl left a message, and I thought she was going to be, like, crazy ex-girlfriend and just delete it, but no, she hears her dad, so Munchkin Cat's like, oh no, it's not Ezra, because she sees the nine iron, nine iron, and, uh, that Ezra still has his, and <laughs> then she hears her dad, so she immediately flips her switch from freaking out about it maybe being Ezra to freaking out about it maybe being her dad, and, yeah, Munchkin Cat is losing her mind. <laughs> her adorable adorable little mind. Little tiny. I mean, not that she's dumb, but she's tiny, so everything about her is tiny and adorable, including her mind, which she's losing. <laughs> I don't know if it's because people were complaining that they didn't see clues um, before, but Spencer's looking through this um, file, and they actually, I mean, there's things highlighted with a yellow highlighter, you know, but they actually, and I don't know why they have recon on Toby, just because he's dating Yvonne, but maybe politicians do that, I don't know. But they actually zoom in on things and they highlight with the screen, like they lighten up the words that we're supposed to pay attention to. Plans to propose at a family lunch. Um, they've never really done that before, I don't think. Um, um, so I don't know, they're being pretty obvious with clues and I'm not sure... If that's just them being like, um, like campy, it seems campy to me, but I don't know if it's just they're trying to, um, be, uh, satisfying to the fans who complain that the clues weren't obvious enough or something like that. Maybe that's one for that, I, 
don't really blame the writers and stuff about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, it's less campy and more like, fine, here you go. If you want it to be like this, here's what it looks like. Um, <laughs> you know, the more obvious, pay attention to this clue and not something that's not a clue, you know, whatever. Which, I mean, I complained about the plot holes and everything too, but, you know, I'm just saying. I don't know if that's why they're doing that. Um, to show us specifically, you need to be looking at this. <laughs> but, and then, like, somebody drives by and takes pictures of Spencer and she stands up and is like, what the heck? And that's kind of a amateur move because you can't really take a picture from inside a car like that with a flash on. Because you're just going to get a picture of your own flash in the window. But, I don't know if that was A. Um, I'm thinking that specifically was, um, just somebody, like, taking pictures for the campaign issue. Like, was, um... The media spying on Spencer for the whole campaign thing. That's what I'm going with for that that scene, because <laughs> um, that's kind of amateur for um, a, which <laughs> so is emojis. <laughs> Somewhere Mona is rolling her eyes at this new A's behavior tactics or whatever. <laughs> she's like, Sh she's rolling her eyes and going, <sighs> amateur. <laughs> I could just hear now. And then Hannah tells her mom that she deleted the footage and actually just goes, oh, Hannah. Like, just like it's so normal. Um, and then she's like, you're not in high school anymore. So yeah, I guess, I guess destroying evidence and committing crimes and sleuthing was, uh, was a class in high school. <laughs> but actually just so calmly is like, oh, Hannah. She's like, it's such a common thing. Like, here we go again. Emily says Paris Hilton might be the new Snapchat, and I'm thinking, um, and this is supposedly in, like, 2017, so it's, like, next year's Paris Hilton gonna be, like, relevant again? Because I haven't heard about her in the media for a long time, so, um, Paris Hilton being the new anything is kind of weird. Uh-oh, I guess that's what we might have to look forward to in 2017, according to Pretty Little Liars. Emily tells Sabrina she's gotta tell her something, but then she says... You make a perfect cappuccino. I don't know what she was going to tell her. I'm just not sure what she was going to tell her. Mama Mare and freak out face and vo voice has not changed in the last five years. I'm happy to see that. Um, still the same. <laughs> I actually like Aria's outfit. I mean, a lot of people were saying it was ugly, but I like her boots and I like her skirt and I like her shirt. I mean, on her. <laughs> I, I think it's cute. I don't think it's too, like, out there. And Spencer sees Toby holding the ring, and, uh, she just looks like, oh, please, no, don't do this. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people think she's, I don't know, maybe not caring or just feeling natural, um, jealousy, but I think she's very bothered by this. I definitely do. Um, she definitely cares <laughs> about this. She does not want Toby to propose. He looks good in those pants. But anyway... <laughs> Um, she, yeah, she's not happy about this, and A can tell, um, A texts her about it, and she's bothered by the text, for sure. Uh, I was talking to some people in a comment section about this, um, Spalib thing, and this girl, I'm gonna find her name, I wrote it down just so I could make sure and give her credit. Kayla, uh, her name's Kayla, um, H-E-I-M, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, I'm not trying to, like, not, <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce it right. Hey, Haim? Haim? Kayla Haim or something like that? I'm sorry. I, I just want to give you credit for um, bringing this up. And, um, you know, maybe Spencer and Caleb don't like each other as much as they think. When they saw each other, they were both away from, you know, uh, Toby and Hannah, respectively. And um, maybe seeing each other reminded them, like, say, you know, Caleb seeing Spencer made him think of Hannah. Spencer seeing Caleb made her think of Toby because, you know, that's their friends. Um, you know, Spencer, obviously, when Caleb sees her, it makes him feel, like, you know, closer to Hannah. When she sees Toby, it makes her feel, or when she sees Caleb, it makes her feel t closer to Toby when they saw each other in Spain. So, maybe it's not that they liked each other when they saw each other like that. They just felt like they did because they felt closer to the people they really loved because they were together. And I could see that happening in real life. Like, that, I could totally see that. That's, that's definitely, um, something that might happen in real life. Um, you know. Like, you know, uh, yeah, that's totally real. And so, yeah, Kayla, um, if you're listening to this, 
I'll try to let you know that I gave you a shout out for that because you she was the one that um, mentioned that. So, and I totally agree, definitely. Um, so yeah, smart girl. I didn't even think of that at all. But yeah, that's definitely definitely a possibility. Uh, and so now that they're seeing like their original people that they really love, they're kind of like, you know, conflicted. Because do they really like each other to begin with, or just was it just that? And I don't know if they realized that yet, but that's probably, you know, that's a possibility, definitely. And then Hannah is talking to Jordan here, and it just, not Ashley, ben, not, not disrespecting Ashley Benson's acting. I don't think this is um, a lack of acting skills on her part, because we know that Ashley Benson can be <laughs> the best, like, act crier ever. Um, she's really good at crying on screen. Um, and making it very believable. I mean, that girl's made me cross so many times. <laughs> but, um, it seems like she's, like, not Ashley, but Hannah herself, the character, seems like she's fake crying to Jordan. Um, she's not totally, like, heartbroken or distraught, for sure. She's just barely crying. It's like, you, so you still want to marry me? Or, I understand if you don't want to marry me anymore. And it's like, um, it feels like she's very, uh... I don't know, like, she's playing this card of, like, I'm sad and I'm sorry, and I'm, it's, like, kind of fake crying, seemingly, and, um, her nail polish is fabulous right now. Yeah, I got it on pause, and she's got this pastel pink, it looks great, but anyway, um, she just seems very, uh, like, she's pulling a, playing this card of sad, weepy, you know, and it seems like she almost wants him to say that he wants to change his mind about marrying her. I think part of her does want him to say, no, I don't want to marry you anymore. And then, of course, he says some things that I can't understand <laughs> in his accent. Something about, um, stuff. <laughs> and, and he's just like, oh, da, 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 Hannah, da, 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 you know, whatever. And then she refers to his dad as Poppy, and I'm just, like, kind of nauseous about that, too. And she just doesn't seem like, sh she does say she's honest with him about everything, and she seems to be honest with him about everything, but... She doesn't seem to be acting herself, um, her quick-witted, blunt self with him. She's kind of, seems, um, like she can't really be her true self around Jordan. Even though she does tell him, like, everything, she just, her personality just seems, um, boxed in. And, uh, it's just awful. I would be so much more upset with Jordan being in these episodes, um, if it weren't for Bros Watch PLL 2. Like, I'd be like, ugh, Jordan's in this episode, ugh. But now I'm kind of like, at least I have them. Because now, when I see Jordan in the episode, I'm kind of happy because I'm like, yes, I get to hear them impersonate Jordan, and it's hilarious. <laughs> so that's a positive thing, I guess, for him being here. That's a bright light. Um, that's a silver lining of this. <laughs> I get to hear them, like, mock him mercilessly, and it's amazing. <laughs> That's the only joy I get from Jordan being in these episodes, is knowing that they will mock him. That's mean, but oh well. That particular text from Ada Hannah with the pigs and the <laughs> bomb with a sad face, so lame. I don't know if this is easily understood, but like, Hannah's like, because he's Caleb or because of you guys? And like, what she meant by because he's Caleb is because he's a tech, I, just in case somebody didn't get that. And then, um... Spencer says, if you're really not okay with this, and Hannah says, wow, that was fast. She meant, like, um, you already started it, you know what I mean? And then, you know, uh, she's bothered by this, obviously, but she wants to be cool with it, so she kind of looks at Jordan like, the only way I'm going to be happy with marrying him is if I'm cool with this. <laughs> she was really trying to force herself to be over it and cool with it, but I don't think it's, deep down, she's not okay with it. And, of course, Spencer is being a good friend still, like I said about um, Caleb. Spencer's like, it's done. It'll never happen again. Like, quickly, just... And I think Spencer's, like, being a loyal friend, but also, like, um, kind of um, on the fence herself about how she feels about it herself. You know what I mean? Like, she's kind of, like, uh, almost looking for an excuse to end it pretty much the whole episode. Uh, kind of. I mean, it just seems um, really awkward and... Like, she isn't 100% sure about it herself, so. But she's also being loyal. Like, it's done. It'll never happen again. And I'm like, I'm glad they're, you know, her and Caleb are both more loyal to their friends than they are themselves. So that's their um, selflessness coming out. And that's kind of true to their character. 
Spencer deleted the text that said um, that thing about Toby's ring on blah blah blah. And um, I don't know, it's like she feels guilty about it, like it's true. I don't think she, if she... I don't think if it, if it didn't bother her and get to her, um, I don't think she would have deleted it. You pretty much only delete things you feel guilty about. I think I think she wouldn't have deleted it. If, if there wasn't some truth to it, I don't think she would have deleted it. And like I said, her and Caleb seem like friends. <laughs> they have their friend chemistry, even in these scenes. And you wouldn't realize that they were even an item unless they actually said the words that they say about it. She actually mentions them as a couple later, I'll get to it. And this is the scene I love. It shows Spencer being her vulnerable self. Um, she's like talking to herself, trying to um, rehearse what she's going to say after she sees Toby and Yvonne. She, she's rehearsing um, what she will say to them. And I just think it's very cute. It's very childlike, not in an immature way, but it's just very um, childlike and, and adorable of Spencer's just vulnerability and... Um, I just want to hug her and be like, you're so cute for doing that. <laughs> it's very real of her, and I just like it. I don't know, something about it I just love. I love... That's one of my favorite parts of this episode is her just rehearsing those lines to herself, and I'm weird, because that's probably my like one of my favorite scenes. My favorite little snippets there is that whoever's idea that was to add that in, I love it. It might have been Troyan's like, idea. I don't know, but it's it's fabulous. I like that Spencer and Yvonne do get along, but she looks down at her ring and then looks at Toby like, oh, you didn't do it. Um, it's kind of crazy because they're not together. They haven't seen each other for a while. They haven't talked in like almost five years. He's looking at her like he's totally in love with her. I don't know if Keegan's like in love with Troyan or what, but like he's just looking at her like with the brightest eyes ever. But um, him and Yvonne kind of talk and they, they're kind of together like a typical couple, but like him and Spencer still have that couple um, telepathy thing going on. Like, there's no such thing as actual, um, you know, however you pronounce it, <laughs> telepathy. I don't, I don't know telepathy. How do you say that? But anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, they have that that connection to where they can just give each other a look and they know what each other's thinking. So they're still on that. Um, they're still they ha there's that connection, you know. Um, that they can do that. That's a very rare thing with couples um, to just look at each other and know what the other is thinking. So they still have that going on and um, it's just I, I see them being together like I don't, you know that's just and uh, Yvonne says they watch Green Acres and I like that show it's okay but like very on PLL like um, <laughs> for somebody to watch that on this show like Spencer is just about to like throw up all over them for even, like, mentioning that kind of television. Um, she's probably like, what? What is, what? <laughs> like, you're watching this? Like, Toby, oh no. I gotta, we gotta go watch some Lauren Bacall and hum Humphrey Bogart. That's our thing, man. You know, like, Toby was set, you know, very fitting for the, um, Nior episode and her as well. <laughs> they were perfect in that, and th that's their thing, like, this this new Jimmy Fallon late night shows and Green Acres. Ugh, Spencer's about to just lose it over that. She's like, no, we can't be having that. We gotta have some better references than this. This is awful. Toby didn't propose to Yvonne, and then he's about to tell Spencer something, and then he gets yelled, called away um, by his girlfriend Yvonne. Uh, Officer Toby, helping her with the ticket. He's about to tell her something, Spencer something, and she, he just, she just gets called away, and Spencer just looks like, oh gee, she makes his face like, oh man, that was awkward. And then Creepy A is looking in the window at Emily in this mailman uniform, and this just is like, ugh, this scene, and like the face this day makes just gives me the creeps, it's like, ugh, like awful, like perverted old man, like I'm, I don't know who A actually is under that mask, but that just scene just, ugh, it really made me sick. And Arya's flipping them more, and they're in the house, and she calls her dad, and here's my theory. Um, he's in the car with somebody, he's like, I think she knows. Um, my theory with Byron is he's a red herring. But I think that what's really going on here, and he's going to tell her about it, and um, we see stills from the next episode where he's like talking to her over lunch. Um, he's seeing someone, I think. I think he's seeing someone, and it's probably somebody weird, like either it's Ashley Marin, which I don't know, that's just... 
I don't know, that's weird. I don't think so. But my first guess was Ella or Meredith. Like, he's either getting back with Ella or he's, like, talking to Meredith again. Which, <laughs> I, I'd rather him be with Ella, kind of. Ooh, I don't know, poor Ella. But anyway, <laughs> um, Byron's not, like, ugh, I don't know. But surely he wouldn't date the woman that tried to murder his daughter, <laughs> which is Meredith. Um, so I don't know. There's something there with, like, a relationship he's having. Or maybe it's just some random woman. Um, but he's, the person seemed to know, and Ezra, you know, he says, Ezra, what you think you saw, you know, we need to talk about it or something like that. Um, I need to talk to you about what you think you saw. So, I think he was, um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure they're gonna go with him talking to Charlotte that night and Ezra seeing that. I, I don't know about that. Um, maybe, I'm not ruling it out, but... I think it's going to be more like he's dating someone and he wants to tell Ari about it. Um, it's just more, I just see that happening. Um, so, yeah, maybe it is Ashley. I don't know who he was at the Radley. Ugh, that's weird to say, the Radley, because the hotel now. Ugh, that's weird. <laughs> Aria throws all her bags on the bed to check for the keys to his car. And, like, people on the internet were saying, wow, she's got a lot of purses. I'm like, that's a third of what I have in my closet. Like, I have so many more purses than that. I think that's a lot. Like, that's a normal. That's, like, a small amount. That's me after I've cleaned out my closet severely. <laughs> I wish I had that little bit of clothes and purses. I have too, like, ugh, I, have, I don't ever get rid of anything and I need to. But anyway, that's about me, not this. But yeah, that, I didn't think that was a lot. And then some people were mad at Byron for being angry at Charlotte. And I'm like, well, that's his daughter. And she did all kinds of stuff. Like, think about the stuff she did to them. Look at Arya's haircut. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But Munchkin Cat looks adorable like this. But anyway, she, you know, he says, she'll walk the streets over my dead body. He said his dead body, not Charlotte's dead body. So I don't think that's really a threat. I think Arya's making a mountain out of a molehill as usual. I'm actually kind of on, I mean, Ella's kind of giving Charlotte the benefit of the doubt here, and I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. I'm kind of not really as harsh as Byron about it, but I, she did a lot of, like, I mean, she did a massive amount of awfulness for no reason. I mean, if she was telling the truth, whoever did it, I think she's still lying about it, but still. Hannah talks to Jordan's lawyer, Jordan's family's lawyer. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this. She just kind of, um, well, she said she's honest with Jordan, but, I mean, honestly, she doesn't tell him about A. Uh, not this A, anyway. Um, and Caleb knows now, so. Caleb's more in with the girls. <laughs> Caleb's still the fifth liar. It's so funny because Caleb fits in better with the girls than Allison or Mona. Like, they want to so bad, but Caleb's just, like, right in there. It's kind of funny to me. I love Caleb, though. I still love Caleb. Um, Toby and Spencer are talking, and she's wearing this adorable tied-up shirt. Some people make fun of her, but I think she looks good. I don't... She's so skinny. Um, Toby looks amazing in that sweater. It's kind of tight. He looks nice. But anyway, <laughs> um, he's being kind of, like, standoffish I think he's angry he's angry with her and he wants her to go away and then he calls her Spence and she kind of smiles because he called her Spence and they're kind of arguing like they always did and <laughs> she, she, something about it she kind of loves that he just called her Spence he talks about the habits um They're just kind of adorable together still, even though they're not getting along and they're acting awkward. He says nobody did anything wrong. He's not really, really angry, but, like, he's very hurt. I, th I feel like he's very hurt, but he's not actually angry. He's not really being a jerk. Some people thought he was being a jerk, but I think he's trying to be, like, cool with it, but, like, he's hurt. So it's coming across as a little bit jerky, but I think he's mainly just hurt and trying to deal with it. Um, there's a lot of feelings there. And here's this awkward scene where they're driving her and Caleb and she says this- all everything about that. I don't like the lines of this. I don't like the awkwardness. It's just not- it's just not right. Like, everything about this is just off. There's something off about this totally. She tries to make a joke and he says, um, 
they're trying to fill each other out to see where they are at. It's very awkward. Um, they're very much not um, comfortable with this. Then he says, something I want to ask you, and she says, already? And she looks down like she doesn't want him to ask her um, to officially be his girlfriend or something. Like, she's not ready for that, because she thinks she still has feelings for Toby and myself, but then he, he asks her something totally different. Um, uh, and then, you know, <laughs> it's just awkward. And then they hold hands and I just throw up all over the place. <laughs> so he asked her why she deleted the text about Toby and then he's, and then she explains she wanted this to be easy and not complicated and I'm like seriously it was already complicated. It's the most complicated thing you could have done. But it's like that kind of proves my theory that she's only doing this as an escape from her other problems. Even though this is creating a whole other problem, she, in her mind this is her escape from that. And, um, especially since it's taboo. It's something that she feels is slightly wrong, but not really wrong. Like, since Hannah's okay with it. But, I mean, she wouldn't do it if Hannah wasn't at least saying that she was okay with it. But she doesn't want to hurt Hannah. But the fact that it's something that is kind of, um, risky or dangerous in her mind, so she's attracted to it, this is an escape for her. And, and her saying this about it, you know, I just want it to stay easy and not complicated is just proof that my theory about that was correct. She wanted things to stay new and easy, but it's like, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> like, you know, like, eventually this will not be new and it won't be easy, because no relationship is. Then Emily comes in her super, super, super skort, short skirt, which, I, this outfit is adorable, but I don't even feel like Shay would wear this in a shoot for, like, a modeling, uh, it's so short, but I think it's kinda cute, but that's way too, but she's having trouble um, wearing this, so I'm, I feel sorry for her. Um, then her and Sabrina get into it, and I'm just like, this will work itself out eventually. I'm not that concerned. <laughs> the backup Radley footage is gone. They can't find it. The vlogger goes and talks to Holbrook, or <laughs> Lorenzo, <laughs> and um, he kind of like flashes his badge at Hannah, and this is the first time that I've ever been like, ugh, Lorenzo, ugh. Really? She knows you're a cop. I, ugh, like, him flashing his badge is just, like, just such a jerk move. I, ugh, it kind of makes me feel icky and grossed out. I just want to, like, be like, ugh, seriously? That's so unnecessary and gross. Just, just, ugh. That's <laughs> all so I have to say about it. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> Jordan does get Hannah in the way that he's like, they're like, she's like, <laughs> the, the lawyer's like, they can't find the Radley file, and then Jordan's like, you didn't do that, did you, to Hannah? So he does get her as far as that goes. <laughs> That's a good question for her. Uh, Spencer and Caleb go to this uh, storage unit, and um, it's a typical Rosewood storage unit. <laughs> and um, I was just, I'm getting the vibe of their friendship still, like when they're together and they're not talking about the relationship. I'm getting the fr old Caleb and Spencer friendship vibe. Their chemistry is very much friends to me. That's just how I feel about them. That's just how they're, they are together. They, just, they just feel like friends to me and detective team. And they found this um, trash can with the hoodies and the gloves and the, you know, old phone. And um, Caleb starts touching everything with his bare hands <laughs> to put fingerprints on literally everything he possibly can to incriminate himself. Um, I don't lurk in the shadows, I hide in plain sight, which reminds me of Mona, honestly. Like, that sounds like something Mona has said, because she said to Allison, um, when Allison first came back from, um, you know, being gone for two years, and Mona, she's, uh, Allison takes those flowers to Bethany's grave, or her own grave <laughs> where Bethany's in, and, um, Mona's there, and she says, I don't have to hide anymore, Allison, you do. And so this person is saying something um, similar to that. And, you know, Spencer had said once about Mona, like, she can be A in plain sight. She doesn't have to be A anymore. She can just torture us as Mona, you know, out in the open. And um, so that, that reminds me of Mona, honestly. And if this is Mona, like, I wouldn't be too mad about it. Some people will probably freak out if it is. Like, no, we already had her as an A. But still, I mean, nobody can do A better than Mona. We've seen so far that nobody can. <laughs> And, uh, even Spencer, you know, which she wasn't really, but I'm not gonna get into that. But, yeah, I wouldn't be too mad, because I think it would be cool. 
um, because I just love Mona. <laughs> Munchkin cat getting in her dad's um, golf clubs and she touches every single one of them as well. And then she sees that there isn't a 9 and then she just goes to level like 10 or level 10 of crazy. And um, then we see that Ashley Marin comes in and pours herself a drink and then we see that she, in fact, um, old habits do die hard actually as Toby said and that kind of fits in with every theme of this episode honestly that's that's the quote of the episode really um, she has stolen the footage uh, from the backup Radley file as and everybody was complaining because it said so obviously and they're like did they have to be so obvious and put on there what it was and I'm like well if they hadn't everybody would have complained that we didn't know for sure what it was you know, so, either way, people are going to complain, you know, it's like, well, if they don't put the info on there, people get mad that they don't know what it is, whenever it's pretty obvious. Um, people always used to complain, like, we don't know for sure what that was, but it's like, yes, you do, the show told you. Like, if you don't, there's some answers that people complain about not getting that I just want to be like, um, no, they told us that. They told us a lot of stuff that people complained about not knowing, um... But it's just people didn't know what the answers were because they weren't paying enough attention. <laughs> like, a lot of things. Or they forgot. So, that's not really the writer's fault. I mean, I'll complain about the writing and there are some things that are worthy of complaint. But then some things, actually, you know, that's just you. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but... There are some answers on there that people complained about not getting that we had answered. People just don't want to, like, believe it or they just didn't pay attention. Like, I've had several people still, who killed Maya? We still don't know. Yes, Nate killed him. And they're like, they didn't say that specifically. And I'm like, yes, he did. He, he did. He did. Like, they want things spelled out for them <laughs> in black and white and, like, just flat out spelled out for them. And then when people spell things out, they're like, that's too obvious or... Why did that thing have... That thing wouldn't really say Radley on it. It's like, yeah, but you get mad when things aren't spelled out for you. And Spencer and Yvonne have this um, very friendly um, announcement about... And um, speech or whatever about voting and things. And I feel like Pretty Little Liars put this in there because it's election year. and It's just a cool PSA. Um, kind of true things that they're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, Hannah's sneaking into her mom's office again, and I love her outfit, the entire thing. It looks great. I love it on her. I probably wouldn't wear it, but she looks fabulous. And the, thus, from this comes one of my other favorite scenes, where um, Munchkin Cat hands Caleb the phone, and he says, hey, and Hannah says, hey, and they sound very familiar, and just, oh, it's just so beautiful, because they're so, you can just tell, you can, like, him and Spencer don't have relationship chemistry when they're, like, talking about being a couple. <laughs> but he and Hannah can just say, hey, and they're on the phone, they're not even in the same room, and they have, it's just like, you can tell they're in love, they have the chemistry even on the phone. <laughs> it's crazy. And then, it's adorable because he's trying to help her pet figure out the password, and he's like, what's the name of your first pet? And she's like, Guppy. She types it in, Guppy. And he's like, you named it Guppy, Guppy. And she's like, I was two. And, like, it's very much old habits die hard, like Toby said. And, um, it's it's just very adorable. I see that they still are, um, into that. There's, I don't even know what to say about it. You can tell they still care. They're, they're still in love with each other. Like, I know they're still in love with each other. And, um, this scene just made me happy because it's very obvious that it's not over. And, um... <clears throat> Then she says, I'm happy about Spencer. I mean, that she told you about the text. And um, that's not what she meant. Um, she's trying to tell him in a roundabout way that um, she's okay with it. But, like, she, like I said, she's trying to force herself to be okay with it. But she's trying to be nice here to him. And it's very mature of her to do that. Um, she loves them both. So she's trying to do the right thing. Which is not the right thing for them to hook up, I don't think. But... She's still trying to do the right thing by her friends, and she's just a very good person, so... And a very good friend to both of them. And, um, she's trying to be a good friend to him, and... She's just trying to do the best thing for everybody, and... <clears throat> trying to do the right thing, and, um... I love her so much for this. I mean, I don't like that this is happening, but she's... You know, uh, I love her, so... Um, but, yeah, you can definitely tell they still love each other. I love that they're talking here. It just seems very right. You know, him making fun of her and her just, like, defending herself. This, like, their little banter they always had. 
it just seems very natural and right. And I think that they're in love in real life, actually, and Tyler. <laughs> and some people, and it's not just because of the couple on TV. I really do think that. Like, I don't normally think that. Like, Toby and Spencer obviously are not in love in real life. She's engaged to somebody totally, you know, somebody else. <laughs> That's not a thing. But it's not because of them being a couple on TV and I like Caleb. It's, like, just for real <laughs> how they act with each other in real life. And I'm not one of those people that just want it to be so because of the TV but, um, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I love this scene where Caleb is... And he's not just nice to the girls he's dating. Um, he's... <laughs> I, I paused it. Emily's mouth is wide open. It's hilarious. But, anyway. Um, he's not just a wonderful guy to the girls he's dating. He's just a wonderful guy. Because he's like, Arya, um, some guys don't always have a full set of clubs. Maybe your dad doesn't have them now or, or never had one. And then Emily interrupts and is like, yeah, and it just happens to be the same thing that was used as a murder weapon. And he's like, I'm trying to be a comfort, calming influence, Emily. And it's just like, I know Emily's been stressed and she's probably mad at Arya a little bit right now. But like, <laughs> it's just Caleb's just trying to be like a good guy. Like, he just needs to be all their therapist. <laughs> like, he's just, I love that he's like nice to all the girls, you know, um, Regardless, even if he wasn't dating any of them, he's just super nice and trying to do the best thing. I don't, I don't know. I just, he's such a, just a good guy, you know, like that's rare. Um, but in ways that, um, are unusual for TV to pick up on, um, usually the good guys on TV are good in like, uh, typical cheesy ways, like Jordan. And some people actually think he's the perfect guy. And I'm like, seriously? No. Uh, no. Um, Caleb's good in ways that most TV shows wouldn't even touch on these issues. Um, in the ways that Caleb's a good guy. A real good guy. Um, <clears throat> I'm absolutely amazed by the writing sometimes. And the character of Caleb is just a good example of um, something that Pretty Little Liars does that most shows don't. Um, most shows don't have a good guy like Caleb in the ways that he's good. He's good in the really rare, um, actual good ways, you know? Like, he's an actual good guy. <laughs> Caleb is an actual good guy. I have to tell the bros this because they have this funny thing about actual actual bad guys. But anyway, um, it's like a joke. <laughs> Caleb's an actual good guy. Um, as opposed to, like, typical TV nice guys that buy their girlfriend flowers all the time and blah blah blah. All that cheesy dumb stuff that's not real. And it's not actually nice, it's just, it's just lame. And it's just, um, payment <laughs> to make a girl like you. But Caleb's an actual, like, good-hearted, decent person, uh, in all the right ways, in all the real right ways. Um, <laughs> I'm going way too far into this. <laughs> but yes, I still love him. He's still a wonderful person. And it's not just to get girls to like him, it's just, he's actually just a good guy. And this is a wonderful example because he says, I was trying to be a calming influence, Emily. But he has an attitude with Emily. But, like, he's very comfortable with these girls. And even though he's having, like, an attitude and it's, like, kind of sarcastic and dry, dry humor and sarcasm, um, usually a good guy on TV is, like, super sweet, like Lucas and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, that kind of good guy. <laughs> but, um, no, he's, like, sarcasm and wit and, like, kind of says mean, like, thing, like, not mean things, but he has an attitude with Emily here, but he's still being a good guy, like, it's hard to explain what I mean, but, but Caleb is definitely not the typical nice guy, um, always sweet and sugary and blah blah blah, it's like, that's not real, um, that's not what nice is, uh, totally, you know, being nice is, you know, totally different than, um, just saying what people want to hear all the time and things like that, so, He's an actual, like, what an actual nice guy would look like <laughs> if people knew what a real nice guy looked like. Um, he's just, uh, Caleb's just basically, um, what girls should be looking for. <laughs> and, like, all those nice guys in the friend zone need to learn a thing or two about what an actual nice guy looks like. And it's Caleb. <laughs> Except for the part about, you know, sleeping with your ex-girlfriend's, like, um, best friend. <laughs> Spencer and Toby have this little conversation off to the side, and um, she's looking at him that way that I said, when she looks at someone she really loves, she looks sad, because <laughs> she loves him. Um, it's very not easy, 
and it's very not new. It's just very deep. She's always looked at Toby this way, and um, <clears throat> I think it's her real love face. Her true love face <laughs> that she makes when she's looking at somebody she truly loves. And it's not like bubbly or beaming, it's, it's more like pain. Real love is pain, it's not bubbly. Um, it's not butterflies and feeling happy all the time, it's, it's pain. <laughs> That sounds bleak, <laughs> but you know, it's a deeper, um, painful love, and, and then K Toby says he wants her to go back to D.C., and he does, he's like, pretty much being like, I wish you would leave, <laughs> but his thing is, um, if she's gone, he can be with Yvonne happily, like, out of sight, out of mind, I guess is what he's thinking, and it's really hard for him to even see Spencer, um, because he still has feelings for her, um, so I think he just wants her gone for that reason. And then she comes over, and then Arya's dad calls, and then they're like, who is it? And she's like, it's my dad. And Hannah and Caleb both at the same time are like, answer it. And then they look at each other, like, awkwardly, like, oh. You know, so we're kind of getting, like, little hints and glimpses of them getting, you know, uh, it's kind of like foreshadowing that, you know, they still got feelings, and I think they're going to get back together. So, yeah, um, it's just very cute that that happened. <laughs> I'm just glad. And, you know, Spencer doesn't seem to mind at all. She's just like, whatever. I don't really think she has the feelings for Caleb that she thought she did. So. That's so obviously a mask on A's head. It's like floppy. It doesn't even fit right. And, of course, you know, we get to see the person inside the car. We get to see the license plate. Um, the people have went back and looked at, like, different scenes of what those numbers could mean. Like, Season 6, episode 14, whatever, you know, whatever the numbers are. And we see this person has sort of a belly, but I don't know if that's part of the costume. But it's obviously not, like, actual... The actual... The actual... <laughs> the actual actor that plays A is probably... That's probably not them. We all know that A always got a body double, and that's, you know, what that is. But this A is, like, ugh, lame. I mean, <laughs> come on. Old A made an A appear in a firework. I mean, you got some big shoes to fill, whoever this is, <laughs> and you're being kind of lame with your little emojis <laughs> and your, like, old man mask. I hope they change that. That's just, ugh, I don't know. There's something about that just it's so campy. It's so campy and cheesy. I'm just not a fan. And that's the episode. I figured this would be, you know, kind of short, and I'm pretty glad that it is. Um, it's a lot less work for me, and I've been trying, I've been hoping I would get this done. Um, right now it's Sunday, so, or Saturday, and, um, I didn't know when I'd get this done, and, um, I was hoping I'd get it done in time, and this wouldn't be very long, uh, I kinda, you know, once I say a lot of things about how I feel about characters and stuff in the first few, then I'll probably have less to say later on, you know, but, um, <laughs> kinda like, you know, in the past couple, I did say a lot, so that kinda keeps this one shorter. Anyway, um, that was that episode, and it was kinda you know, progress of getting there to where we're going in the show, and, um, hopefully, and I'm just not just, like, about the ships, like, Caleb, but there, you know, I've said a lot of what I had a problem with that there, and, um, I don't know, I just feel like it's just not fitting for this to be happening, I don't feel like these characters would be like this, and, um, the chemistry between the actors, um, Troyan and Tyler have a really good chemistry as friends, and that's what I'm, they still feel like that to me. <laughs> um, I think their chemistry is there on that level. Um, and he and Ashley have this wonderful uh, chemistry for romance. Not just romance, like the typical, but like they have a great chemistry for love. Um, I think they truly love each other in real life. Even if they don't end up together or like that, but like they really... Um, they're really close, like, super close. I mean, we all know that. So, um, yeah, we'll get to more of that later. There's supposed to be a really heart-wrenching scene with those two coming up. I don't know if it's going to be a current thing or, like, um, a flashback to their breakup. But apparently there's going to be a super emotional scene. Ashley said that they both were actually, it was so sad that they were actually crying in real life. Um, I think it was their breakup scene. It's probably a flashback. And, um... <clears throat> she said it was so sad for them that Caleb had to break up. Um, the actors, Tyler and Ashley, were so sad that Caleb broke up that doing the scene 
um, made them actually cry in real life. <laughs> so just think about that for a minute. That's, they really care, you know, they're really invested in this. Um, so I think they, you know, I, I do think they're in love in real life. And, um, it's not because of the show. I just really do think that. Um, I'm not just trying to be a Haleb shipper, <laughs> you know, it's not, not because of that reason, because I'm not that crazy. Um, I'm not weird, you know, I'm not like that. I'm just not that kind of person. Um, <clears throat> I know that acting is acting, and real life is totally different, but, you know, I've seen them together in real life, and I really do think that. So I don't know if, like, Haleb breaking up is, like, you know, for them, since they can't be together in real life or can't admit it, um, having the relationship on screen um, kind of fulfilled the want to be together, really. <laughs> you know, so them breaking up on the show, like, really hurts them. It makes sense, because it really did hurt them. I mean, she said it. She, Ashley actually said they cr they were crying in real life. Like, they're crying in the scene, but those aren't fake tears. Um, that's not, ac they're not acting when they're crying. It's, it's, they were actually crying because it was so sad for them. So, <laughs> I just want everybody to know that, because that's just, I can't wait to see it almost, just, and I'm probably going to ball my eyes out, but, um, yeah, um, I'm kind of like, uh, can't, can't wait to see it, like, I know it's going to hurt me, but, like, I'm just kind of expectant, like, I just, I want to see it, you know, like, I can't wait to see it, it's probably going to be really heart-wrenching, but probably great, you know, just great, um, to watch, which is kind of, like, sounds morbid, because I know they're actually in pain in real life, but, um, oh, it's going to be hard to watch. But anyway, that's that's uh, new guys, new laws, and um, we'll see what happens next week. The next episode, it's going to be called. Um, let me look at my little picture here for the list. The next episode is going to be called uh, "Do Not Disturb," which I'm thinking has something to do with the apartment, the hotel room. We see that Spencer, Team Sparry, is back and. Spencer's going to be climbing over some balconies. It's going to be interesting. See, in the promos of that, I didn't really know what she was climbing over. It looked like she was climbing from desk to desk. I don't know. I'm weird. I didn't really realize what that was. But um, So I'm thinking they're going to be spying on Sarah's hotel room. And, um, yeah, um, the show show next week is probably going to be the little munchkin cat. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about all that. So, um, and let's try not to make this too long. But anyway, I uh, hope, hope you guys enjoyed all my opinions and ramblings. And uh, uh, I don't know how to end these still. <laughs> um, okay. Um, bye. I love you guys.